There's something that comes, that preludes that a little bit. Um, so one is, we should identify ways for um, these young companies to uh, uh, make sure that they are, um, they can recognize iteratively that they are on the right track towards the enterprise. And a couple of ways to do that. One, as I mentioned, if you are venture backed, uh, make sure that your, your, your board member from the venture capital firm uh, that is investing in you um, has the relationships and can bring you in front of the relationships with the enterprises that they have relationships with because we build those relationships, right? Um, uh, enterprises do. So we enterprises build relationships with VC firms because they are a diligence and a filter to get in front of some of these young companies. They, they can go after every young company that's popping up, so they have to find a way to filter it. VCs are one filter. Um, so that's one thing So they can do is, if you're VC-backed, you should try and identify the board member who can give you access to enough uh, of enterprise um, kind of leadership, if you will, technology leadership. The second way to do it, if you're not VC-backed, or even if you are additionally, uh, is to um, identify people in the, in the technology network um, who are uh, qualified to be board members, advisory board members to you early in your, in your product life cycle, right? Or, or service life cycle for that matter. So uh, advisory board members being, if you, if, if, you are, if you are focusing on one particular industry, healthcare, right, as an example, you wanna make sure that there are enough folks who can be on your advisory board who can give you insight into that industry. What are the regula regulatory uh, hurdles that you have to jump through? What are typically the, um, the uh, business questions that add, they are, are asked of young companies before they enter? Uh, you know, stuff like that. So th all of that is answerable by these folks who typically, there's an appetite. There are people with you know, leadership positions in these enterprises who want to be on advisory boards of young companies. So there's a whole matchmaking happening where you're saying, how do we get you as a startup or a young company to get the advisory board members to advise you on how to navigate some of their industry uh, style works, if you will. So that, 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 yeah, that, that would be a good, that would be kind of a good set next step in terms of saying, how do we kind of get in front of the right people? Let's, how, how do you make sure you're not wasting time? Uh, one of the things uh, I'll warn, I, I typically warn young companies not to do is very early on, they tend to want to get into a sales cycle. Right? They want to mimic the large enterprises. And what typically happens is they'll go out, uh, you know, spend hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of dollars of their uh, you know, hard you know, raised money from these VCs or otherwise, and then invest that in these sales folks from large vendors, IBM or Cisco or VMware or whatever. The challenge there is those sales folks have zero idea on how to sell a small company's platform to a large enterprise. They are very good at being a, a, a big vendor salesperson. So that, that, that right out of the gate, that is a wrong step. You are, you are essentially shooting yourself in the foot by having these sales folks so early in your product cycle, uh, you know, messing up your, everything from your cash flow to your, uh, your, your, your opportunity to market yourself right, the opportunity to discover the right business cases, all of that, all of that is lost out the door. So I prefer that you, you prioritize getting the right VC board member, investing, investor board member to advise you or build a customer advisory board to be able to help you kind of get in front of the right folks.